Uh, Mr. President, thank you very much indeed for honoring me with an invitation to be here this evening. I love that last contribution. I'm off, I'm off script already. I think it's great. I'm not sure I have a clear analysis how to answer what you've said, so I'll, I'll just give that a miss. But, but um, some years ago, I went to Calais, uh, one of my visits to Calais, to look at the refugee situation there. And in walking down, this was before the camp was completely cleared, in walking down that shopping street in the middle, there were displays of tear gas canisters and rubber bullets. And I said, why are they here? And they said, well, the then French government was very concerned about the activities of the National Front in the Calais area. And they were determined in clearing the first half of the camp that they would show how tough they could be. And I could only conclude that you do not defeat fascism by behaving like the fascists. And I found that a very sobering, a very sobering visit. Uh, and indeed, my other visits to Calais and other refugee camps have also been equally sobering. Of course, we are facing a real crisis in the world in terms of how we handle refugees. But that is not the same as what our government is trying to do here. Um, what we've seen, unfortunately, in some European countries is the extreme right have tried to exploit the refugee situation for their own electoral advantage. And they've had some, regrettably, some success in that in Germany, in Italy, uh, Austria, uh, and one to other countries. But I've always felt that a little episode that occurred to me walking down the street in Hammersmith at the time I was moving an amendment on behalf of child refugees was this. Somebody shouted, I heard somebody shouting at me. And normally when people shout at politicians, it's abuse, hostile. And I, I looked down and then she said, keep going with your amendment. And it made me realize that not all the British people are hostile to refugees. And indeed there is a real crisis for us in terms of whether we can win public opinion over, because we can only have sensible policies on refugees if we get public opinion on our side. And that worked quite well. And unfortunately, we then got to the, the Brexit referendum, and that was used in a very shabby way against refugees, against people coming in this country. And I know it's history, for some of you, maybe very ancient history indeed, but uh, uh, I, I knocked on the door, a woman said she was going to vote leave, uh, this was in an area of Mendy Remain in, in West London. And I said, why are you going to vote to leave? And she said, it's because of all, all this immigration. And uh, they don't, don't always distinguish between refugees and, and, and other, other forms of migrants. And I said, um, but li listen, I've just uh, I had some hospital treatment for one day, and everybody who treated me was a refugee, or, or a migrant anyway, everybody. She said, it's not the ones that are here now that bother me, it's the further ones that are going to come. Meaning, when Boris Johnson said, if we don't leave the EU, 70 million Turks are poised to enter Britain. And that was really shabby. And that helped to poison the atmosphere. So my feeling is that the battle for public opinion is still a very vital one. And there are people who are working, working very much against us. Which is why I did welcome the Archbishop of Canterbury yesterday when he talked about the legislation before Parliament was morally unacceptable. And that shook a lot of people who didn't expect the Archbishop to be quite so uh, positive and, and, and quite so clear-cut. Now, what is the government doing as part of, the, part of its policies? See, um, every parliamentary bill has to have on it a statement, or used to have on it a statement, saying that this bill was compatible with the, with the European Convention on Human Rights, which we were signatories to and which we were actually almost founder members of, enforced by the European Court of Human Rights. And now we find this illegal migration bill, which we discussed in the Lords yesterday, and the minister said, and I'm going to quote this, I'm unable to make a statement, I'm unable to make a statement that in my view, the provisions of the illegal migration bill are compatible with the Convention of Rights, but the government is never, nevertheless wishes the House to proceed with the bill. In other words, we're breaching the Convention, but let's go ahead and tell with it. And I think that was a very sorry comment because as a country, we've traditionally upheld the rule of law. As a country, we've stuck by our international obligations, whether it's the 1951 Geneva Convention on Refugees, Convention on the Rights of the Child, and so on. We're regarded as a country that sticks to these things. And yet here we have a government that is saying, we're basically, we're so keen to get this bill through, we don't mind if it breaches the European Convention on Human Rights. 
And I think that is a sign of how, of, how, of how much we have fallen. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees says that the policy on Rwanda is, is, in, is incompatible with, with, with the convention, and indeed many of the provisions here are incompatible with the, with the, with the, with the Geneva Convention as well as with the uh, European Convention on Human Rights. And surely, if the, the government says that's all nonsense, we know better how to interpret the Refugee Convention. But surely, if there's one organization internationally that is the guardian of the 1951 Geneva Convention, it is the United, it, it, it is the United, Nations, um, United Nations body. And to say, well, we, don't, we know better than they do, seems to me a travesty, seems to be a breach of what should be happening. So we, we've sunk a long way in terms of what, 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 we're, now, what we're now seeking to do. Uh, and and I, I just feel the 51 Convention is so fundamental, and I would like to see an amendment to this bill going through to say that, to, say that, uh, uh, to strike out anything that is incompatible with the 1951 Geneva Convention. But let me say this. Language in this is very important. And language in influencing public opinion is important. We know from Nazi Germany in the 1930s the importance of language and how language was used to stir up feelings which then led to the Holocaust. But it started off with language. And we've got to be very careful before we use language that creates hostility. Because if as a country we're going to share in the responsibility for welcoming refugees, and we should share that responsibility, then I, I think we have to be very careful about the language that we use and how we get public opinion on our side. And I just got a few quotes here. They're quite shocking. I mean, our Home Secretary, Swella Braverman, uh, said a few months ago, she, she talked about the refugees arriving via the English Channel as an invasion on our southern coast. Invaders are normally, in my language anyway, are, are the enemy. And she says these people are our enemies when they are people who are fleeing for, for, for safety. Um, uh, and another, I've got several of these quotes. Um, people coming here illegally possess values which are at odds with our country. Now, first of all, in the scheme of things, under the 51 Convention, you are not illegal if you cross a border. It is the right to cross a border uh, uh, and claim, uh, claim refugee status. The country then has to decide w w whether, you, whether you qualify under the Geneva Convention, and that should be a proper, fair process. But uh, it's nothing illegal, and to keep calling people illegal seems to me a shocking way, a shocking way of, 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 of proceeding. And then, and then and another comment, uh, they're talking about we, we're seeing heightened levels of criminality. I don't think there's any evidence that the people coming here have heightened levels of criminality, but there we are, that is what, that is what the Home Secretary has been saying. And she's saying they're getting very quickly involved in the drugs trade, in other exploitation, in criminality and prostitution. And that is all calculated to make people hostile. When the government have put people into hotels, and that's not the right way to do it, but at least they put them into hotels, uh, and then you get these demos outside by people on the far right protesting they don't want these people here. And yet, and yet, this hostility must come from somewhere, and I argue it comes, it comes from the government. And yet there are conservative MPs, uh, 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 Roger Gale said, I don't accept or trust this Home Secretary's word. She's only really interested in playing to the right wing. One comment. There was Neil Bazo, uh, the UK's former head of counterterrorism and assistant commissioner for the Met, uh, who said, it's unbelievable to hear a succession of very powerful politicians who look like this, who look like this, talking in language that my father would have remembered from 1968. It's horrible. And, and, and a conservative MP again, Jonathan Gullis, who said, I don't feel comfortable with the mentioning of the values. That's to say the people coming here don't share our, our values. It's an old trick using that. Uh, and then the immigration minister said, um, excessive uncontrolled migration threatens to cannibalize the UK's compassion. I think that's a deeply shocking, shocking thing to say. And unfortunately, we have many quotes. We have quotes from Priti Patel, uh, and, and we've had quotes all the time. Now, it seems to me these, are, these comments are made by people who are not thinking about the consequences of what they're saying. They are comments made by individuals in senior positions. Instead of saying, as a country, we should welcome refugees, we should welcome people who are fleeing for safety, we can't take them all. Of course we can't. 
And I've always argued that the right way forward with, with refugee policy is for us to share responsibility with other European countries and say, we'll take our share and you take, you take more. When, when Angela Merkel took a million Syrians, she asked other countries whether they'd step in and help, and they didn't. When there was a fire on Lesbos Island, uh, uh, the Greeks said, please come and help. And initially, after a bit, people helped a little bit, but very little. And surely the way forward is to share responsibility. Not to say we want to keep you out, but to share responsibility and to say, look, we're all, we all have a part to play in this. And it's reasonable that we take our share, other countries should take their share as well. Uh, and I think that is the best way forward with, 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 with refugee policy. Uh, I'm, I, I could talk a long time about other, the other aspects of, of this illegal migration bill. But what I fear it has done, it has torn up a long tradition whereby we uphold the, the rule of law, where we uphold international human rights standards, which are one of the few things that the world has going for it, which we should keep going, because they matter. And as a country, we've always been regarded as upholders of, the, of that particular set of values. And if we depart from that, we'll, we'll come to a, a sorry pass. Uh, I, I visited the European Court of Human Rights some years ago uh, in Strasbourg, and at that time, Britain was not going to adhere to a decision, which is that prisoners in, well, some prisoners in jail should be allowed to have the vote. Uh, I mean, waters moved on a bit. But what they said to us, uh, the people at the European Court of Human Rights, is if Britain, if Britain does not adhere to decisions of the European Court of Human Rights, then the, and Britain has traditionally done that, then the notorious abusers of human rights, the Russians and others, we just say, if the Brits don't do it, why should we bother? So we have set stand, a very abysmal standard indeed in the way we've approached this issue and the language we're using is calculated to make things worse.